Greetings. I'm Dr. Kim Kyung-won. Let's look at the case for today's online surgery. 29-year-old male patient. The patient does not have a special medical history. If you look at the panoramic image in 24 and 25, there's a history of endodontic treatment. Five, six years ago, there's a history of epicoectomy in upper 24 and 25. Number 24 has healed nicely. In the case of number 25, repeatedly, I think there was fistula and inflammation. In the crown area, a lot of bone loss is observed. Number 25, I plan for extraction and implant placement. On panoramic image, there is epical lesion. It is in contact with the inferior margin of the sinus. I took CT. As mentioned, on the epical side of number 25, there's lesion, and on CT, there are signs of fistula on the buccal side, so buccal bone loss can be observed. The sinus itself, there's a little bit of mucosal thickening, but there's no major issue. I plan for immediate placement after extraction. The buccal lingual width of number 25 is quite wide and palatal bone is favorable and buccal bone is very thin. If you take a look at the CT, sinus cavity itself is without problem. With immediate implant placement, you need to do extraction as atraumatically as possible and apical lesion is going to be removed. When implant is going to be placed, the primary stability is going to be gained from the sinus floor. My plan is to intentionally penetrate the sinus floor slightly so we can get primary stability from the apex. The implant to be placed is going to be slightly palatally inclined. The labial bone on the buccal side using bone graft. Bone graft is going to be used to prevent buccal plate loss. In my opinion, the current plan is to use TS3 because it's a premolar and it's a 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant. I'm going to drill up to 4.0 and the sinus floor is going to be penetrated using the good self-tapping ability of TS3 implant. Diameter 4.5 implant is going to be placed and bone graft is going to be done. As shown after extracting number 25, I'm going to penetrate sinus floor intentionally to get good primary stability from the apex. I'm going to try to prevent buccal plate loss with bone graft. This is post-op panoramic image. This is a premolar area and, and it looks like the path is not very good. However, if you look at the CT with the adjacent tooth, the path is not very problematic. As I mentioned earlier, primary stability of the implant is going to be gained from the apical side of the sinus floor by penetrating it intentionally. After getting good primary stability using TS3 implant with good self-tapping ability, I have filled the extraction socket with sure os and allogenic bone for bone graft and have covered it up with collagen membrane and gained primary closure. Post-op CT, as you can see, after extraction on the apical side, there's a lesion on the buccal side. Sufficient bone graft was done and primary closure was done. You can see now it's healing. It's a type of open membrane technique and what is exposed was covered with collagen membrane. Let's look at the surgical video. This is immediate implantation case. So atraumatic extraction is very important. In the premolar area, if the distance with the mesial tooth is really tight, I luxate using periosteal elevator. Using forceps, 
As much as possible, you need to prevent any damage to the alveolar bone. Forceps is being used to do extraction to prevent any alveolar bone loss. The root is not divided into two. The extraction socket, buccal palatally, is quite wide. Water. Close slightly. Close slightly. Looking at depth gauge, sinus floor is slightly penetrated. This has been confirmed. 4.0 by 10 millimeter final drill is going to be used. The 4.5 diameter implant is going to be placed, but to get good primary stability from the sinus floor, I'm going to do like this. The implant is TS3BA 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant. I'm placing it. It's slightly palatally inclined, as clearly shown. You can see that there's sufficient space with the buccal bone. Bite. See ya. I will see ya. ISQ value using Austell is approximately 60. 60. We only get primary stability from the apex, so ISQ value is not very high. I'm going to use cover screw and for the empty space within the socket, if you just leave it as is, buccal bone loss can occur significantly. I'm going to use allograft. There's more than two millimeter of space here. Allograft is used to do bone graft within the socket. If the space was narrower, you can use a xenograft, but for this patient, I'm going to use allograft. I'm going to focus on buccal and palatal side. After that, I'm going to use osmem spoft, which is the new collagen membrane from Ostem. Coverage is done superiorly. Flap has not been reflected much. Undermining on buccal and palatal is done. Osmem is positioned. When you do open membrane technique, you use dense PTFE membrane, but I just used collagen membrane and do suture. 
for suture, I use hidden X suture. When you do figure of eight, you go and buckle and come out the same direction. With hidden X suture, you go mesial of the buckle to the distal and distal to mesial. And this is how it's done. Membrane is fixed. Because the exposed area is quite extensive, hidden X suture is done once again. Suture is now complete. If collagen membrane is exposed like this, this part will be resorbed and the bone graft superior to that will be resorbed, but this was done to maintain the buccal bone. Immediate implantation after extraction has been demonstrated. Thank you for watching.